Asthma comes up all the time in finals. Acute severe asthma is characterised by the inability to complete sentences in one breath. A heart rate greater than 110, a peak expiratory flow rate of less than 50% of predicted, or a respiratory rate greater than 25. Those are the clinical features of acute severe asthma. And then within that, there are life threatening features and very life and very severe life threatening features. I suppose the characteristics here would actually classify a severe asthma with a peak expiratory flow rate less than 50%. They can't complete sentences, their respiratory rate is greater than 25 and uh, their heart rate is greater than 110. If they were moderate, that moderate asthma severity, uh, the peak expiratory flow rate would be less than 75. So that moderate is a peak expiratory flow rate of less than 75% and in a mild their peak expiratory flow rate would be greater than 75% and these are of predicted values. The best way to remember the uh, classic features of a life threatening asthma is using the mnemonic 3392 chest. So 33 uh, represents that the peak expiratory flow rate is less than 33% of predict. If you're looking at the 92 then, that SATs are less than 92% and the chest has an mnemonic. So we have cyanosis, hypotension, exhaustion, silent chest you can't hear anything if you listen to the chest and a tachycardia and any of these features can indicate a life-threatening asthma so if the examiner were to ask you what investigations would you like uh, you might say that you want to pick expiratory flow rate you want an abg uh, and that would assess any oxygen uh, deficit any hypoxia it would also assess a carbon dioxide uh, retention uh, if the person was tiring and um, particularly and if you're suspecting a hyperventilation picture that might be uh, alkalotic um, in the bloods you might want to look for potassium level because the drugs you treat um, bronchospasm with salbutamol for example make um, can make patients uh, hypokalemic. You want a chest x-ray to see if they're all hyperexpanded or there's any focal evidence of consolidation that might show that the patient uh, has a chest infection that's exacerbating the asthma uh, and as outpatient tests or inpatient tests once the initial um, um, bad episode of asthma so we might want pulmonary function tests to show that obstructive picture and reversibility uh, with bronchodilators so a good way of remembering treatments uh, in an asthma attack uh, is this mnemonic that is listed down the side here but that would sa uh, stand for um, oxygen therapy uh, it stands for salbutamol and salbutamol can be given nebulized uh, as sort of five milligram nebs. They can be given back to back uh, along with the epitropin that we're going to talk about in a minute, but can also be given intravenously um, um, by more senior clinicians as well. Uh, you want to give hydrocortisone. Cortisone doesn't really uh, work immediately, but it will work over the next number of hours and it will reduce the inflammation. And you can give it IV, um, but you can also give uh, prednisolone. And prednisone can be given orally and is, is basically as effective um, if the patient can actually swallow and take it. I stands for epitropium, gerontimuscarinic, uh, and that's a neb. Uh, T stands for theophylline. And that would normally be given um, if you're giving it intravenously you, you'd perhaps give this in a more intensive environment such as ICU but uh, magnesium sulfate uh, in severe asthma attacks is very good you can give between two to five grams of this uh, you need to watch can cause hyper hypotension so it can cause a drop in BP but it does relax the smooth muscles in your lungs and then escalation so this patient might require intubation and ICU. And things that might um, 
you know, precipitate an admission to intensive care and the asthmatic is a worsening acidosis, not getting better, they're coming exhausted, tired, and that CO2 is going to build up uh, confusion, they drop their GCS, um, a reduction uh, in the POG, that's hypoxia, hypercapnia, and an increasing oxygen requirement, that is your fraction of inhaled O2, your increasing oxygen requirements. So a couple of good mnemonics here. We had 3392 chest that showed that life-threatening asthma can be characterized by peak expiratory fluids of less than 33% of predicted, le less than 92% oxygen saturations, cyanosis, hypotension, exhaustion, silent chest and tachycardia. And then the mnemonic on this page that actually tells you a bit more about the treatments that you can um, you can give an asthmatic uh, to try to get them over the initial hump and um, you'd start really with um, oxygen therapy salbutamol back-to-back -back nebulizers you can use salbutamol nepotropium in the same um in the same nebulizer vial and these can be given back to back to try to break the bronchospasm giving things like magnesium will also help theophylline best left to ICU but hydrocortisone should be given immediately treat with antibiotics would be the only other real thing that's not included in this mnemonic if you suspect um, a, a septic cause of, of the um, of the insult that is causing this acute episode of asthma you should query whether you need to give the person antibiotics a couple of other considerations here aminophilline or theophylline infusions will need a daily serum level if the drug is given uh, these are not used very often they're given in intensive care but it's just a consideration of therapeutic um, therapeutic monitoring uh, epitropium is an anti-muscarinic drug and is given as a 500 microgram nebulizer Magnesium sulfate intravenously can cause a transient hypotension if given too quickly, but you ameliorate that by giving it over a longer period of time, such as half an hour to an hour, where time permits. You can discuss deteriorating asthmatics who are unresponsive to treatment with ICU at an early stage, but you call senior help from within your own team early first. Intravenous theophylline or IV salbutamol is not usually given by junior medical staff. Uh, you should discuss with the senior. And in all emergencies, apart from perhaps paraquat poisoning where oxygen worsens that state, you give all emergencies 50, 15 litres of oxygen per minute uh, via a non-rebreathe mask.